Our interpretation of the derivative as a coefficient of first-order variation is a very useful way to think and even compute derivatives. It can be more fun than working with the limits definition that you've probably worked with in the past. Let's consider some examples. First, let's look at an exponential function. Compute the derivative of f of x equals e to the 3x. And let's recall how this first order variation method works. We look at f of x plus h, and we expand that out in the limit as h goes to zero, as f of x plus the derivative of f times h plus big O of h squared. So that coefficient of the first order term in h is the derivative f prime or df dx in this case. So, Going back to our function, e to the 3x, let's consider what happens when we replace x with x plus h. That gives us e to the 3 times quantity x plus h. Our next step is to use exponent laws to break this up as e to the 3x times e to the 3h. Now what does that give us? Well, we've got that e to the 3x out in front and then what's left is e to the 3h in the limit as h goes to 0. We can expand that out using Taylor series. We can say that that is 1 plus 3 times h plus a bunch of other stuff that we're just going to put into a big O of h squared trash can. And now we can distribute this multiplication. What do we get? We get e to the 3x times 1 plus e to the 3x times 3h, that's 3e to the 3x times h. And then we get e to the 3x times big O of h squared. But that just all goes into the trash. That's all big O of h squared. Now you have to be a little careful at this point because we've got x's and we've got h's floating around. Remember, what's the variable here? It's the h. And we're looking at the asymptotics of this in the limit as h goes to zero. So that e to the 3x, that's kind of like a constant. And so it just gets absorbed into that big O of h squared. Okay, now remember what the goal is. The goal is to look for the coefficient of the first order term in h. What is that? In this case, it is 3 times e to the 3x. And that's it. That's the derivative. The derivative of e to the 3x is 3 times e to the 3x. Now, is this a surprise? No, it's not a surprise. You probably knew exactly what this was before we got going, because you've seen some calculus before. You maybe memorized how to compute derivatives like this. But if you don't know those derivative rules, then either you have to use the definition in terms of limits, or we have a slightly different approach here where we're expanding things out in H using a little bit about what we know about asymptotics and big O. Let's practice with another example, this time involving a cosine function, something a little more complicated. Consider f of x equals cosine of x squared. Let's follow the same procedure to compute the derivative of this. We have f of x plus h. That means that x squared now becomes quantity x plus h squared. And I'm looking at the function cosine of quantity x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. Now at this point, what I want to do is break that term up into two pieces. I'm going to say that this is cosine of x squared plus quantity 2xh plus h squared. So I'm taking the cosine of all of that. And now let's recall the addition formulae for sine and cosine. Think back. Do you remember these? They're a little bit difficult to remember, but hopefully you've seen them before. What we're going to need is that cosine of quantity a plus b is cosine of a cosine of b minus sine of a sine of b. Okay, so let's go back to the problem at hand, where our a is x squared, our b is quantity 2xh plus h squared. Applying that cosine addition formula, we get cosine of x squared 
times cosine of quantity 2xh plus h squared. Then we subtract sine of x squared times sine of quantity 2xh plus h squared. Now, why do we do this? We did this so that we can separate out the terms that go to zero. Look at the cosine of 2xh plus h squared. Look at the sine of 2xh plus h squared. In the limit as h goes to zero, both of those terms are going to zero. That means we can expand the cosine and the sine about zero, recalling what we know from Taylor series. This gives us cosine of x squared out front times, what's the expansion of cosine of 2xh plus h squared? Oh, that's quantity one, and then a bunch of other stuff that's in big O of h squared. For the second term, we have minus sine of x squared times what happens when we expand sine of 2xh plus h squared? We get quantity 2xh plus h squared and then a bunch of other stuff. I can put all of that stuff into a big O of h squared. So we just get quantity 2xh plus big O of h squared. Now, what do we do? We distribute the multiplication, sorting things out term by term. The zeroth order term in this expansion is cosine of x squared times one. That's just f of x. Of course, that makes sense. Let's see, where's the next highest order term? Oh, there's an h all by itself in that 2xh that gets multiplied by negative sine of x squared. So we have, for the first order term, negative 2x sine of x squared times h, and then all the other terms get tossed into a big O of h squared. Keeping in mind again that h is the variable that we care about, that's the thing that goes to zero. Now, as before, we look for the coefficient of the first order term. What's in front of the h? It's negative 2x times sine of x squared. And that, indeed, is the derivative of cosine of x squared. Now again, you may remember how to get at that. You would use the chain rule and the fact that the derivative of cosine is minus sine. Oh, that's great, no problem. But if you have to do it by hand, then either you have some unpleasant computations with limits to work with, or with a little bit of asymptotic expansion, this is really not so bad.